In this video, I'm going to show you five incredible ways to use the masking tool in Premiere Pro that you might not know about. Hey, welcome to the video. And as mentioned, I'm going to show you five incredible ways you can use the masking tool in Premiere Pro. The first one is the fisheye lens effect. So let's get started. So this is the fisheye lens effect. Now we're going to create this effect using the masking tool. And it's a really cool effect that you'll see in music videos, skateboarding videos, and various movies. And it can really look great. But if you don't own a fisheye lens, it's almost impossible to do unless you can do it like this. So let me show you how you can do it in Premiere Pro. Select your clip and go into the opacity section. Select the ellipse mask and create a mask like this. Now go back to the opacity and increase the feathering like this. Next in effects, find the lens distortion effect and drag it onto the clip. Now we're going to increase the curvature and change the scale of the clip if needed. And that looks great. One extra step you can do is add the chromatic aberrations effect and drag it onto your clip. Now draw another similar mask like the first one. Then click invert. Then increase the feathering and decrease the fall off distance to make the effect more subtle. And there you go. Now you don't need to add this last effect, but I wanted to include it if you want to use it for creative purposes. Get ready to spice up your videos with this cool text masking effect. This trick involves revealing your text from a specific element from within your video. Sounds intriguing, right? So let's jump into how you can do it. First up is clip and text placement. Start by choosing a clip that features an element from which your text can appear. Type out your desired text and place this text layer above the video clip. Adjust its size and position as per your preference. Next, clip duplication. Now it's time to duplicate the bottom clip. You can easily do this by holding down the Option key and dragging it above your text layer. Now we look at Opacity and Masking. Next, navigate to the Opacity section and draw a shape around the area from where you'd like the text to emerge. For instance, let's go with the horizon. And now we need to look at keyframe animation. Drag your text down and add a keyframe at this point. Move around six seconds ahead in your timeline and elevate your text similar to this. Tweak the end keyframe and choose the ease in option for a smooth animation. And there you go, that's how you do the text masking effect. Try this in your next video to impress your viewers. Are you craving a sunset in your videos? Maybe you want to change that boring sky into something super exciting. Let me show you how you do it. First off, clip duplication. Begin with a shot you'd like to enhance. Duplicate the clip by holding down the option key and dragging it above the original. Now masking the sky. Adjust your view to 25%. Navigate to the opacity section and draw a mask around the sky. Next, feather the edges. Head to the start and introduce some feathering to create a smoother transition between the sky and the rest of the scene. Now for some color adjustment. Select the top clip and delve into the temperature and tint section. Here's where the real magic happens. Feel free to alter the color of the sky as per your creative vision. And just like that, you've transformed the mundane sky into a mesmerizing vista. So have a play around with this one and get your creative juices flowing. Next is the zoom eye transition. And this one is pretty incredible. We're gonna use this shot of an eye here. We're gonna zoom right into it and through the eye into the next shot. So let me show you how you can do it. The first step is to get both of your clips onto the timeline and then line them up. Go to where the eye just starts to open and move the second clip underneath at this point. Then go over to your Opacity tool and select the Free Draw tool. And draw around the eye. To reverse, come to here and click Inverted. Now make sure these keyframes are enabled. Go through each frame and line up the clip so it follows the outline of the eye and stays in the same place. Click anywhere on the lines to add more points so it's more accurate. Make sure to spend a bit of time on this to get it as accurate as you can. I'll fast forward through this bit. Now that's done, add a bit of feathering to make it look cleaner and blend nicely and some mask expansion if needed. Now 
Now, when you go back to the beginning of the clip, you'll notice there's this bit of black mask here. To get rid of this, just cut the clip and delete the mask from this section. Now, go a few frames before the end of the first clip and go over to your effect. Then toggle the scale keyframe. And then go towards the end of the clip and scale it to about 500. And there you go. To make the transition smoother, add the directional blur effect and keyframe it towards the end. You can also add a whoosh sound effect to make the transition more effective. And here's the final outcome with a color grade and some sound effects added. And finally, number five is the simple masking transition. This one is really good, it's super simple, so let's jump into it. Find two clips that you want to use and drag them onto your timeline. Next, cut the first shot to the point where the shape you're masking leaves the frame completely like this and then delete this bit. Now, drag this layer up and get your second clip placing it beneath it just at the point where the object starts to appear. Now, both clips are at the correct place. Go to Opacity and click this free draw icon. Move a few frames forward until you see the line and start drawing your mask. Zoom out here so it's much easier. Click inverted here so you can see the other clip. Now let's add some feathering, maybe between 30 to 55. It all depends on how strong you want it. Toggle all these keyframes and one frame by one, align the mask with the line each time. Click the line to add more points and make sure it covers it all by dragging this further out. Repeat this frame by frame until it's completely gone. Now go to the start here and pull this black section away. And here we go. And there you have it, that's five masking techniques you can use in Premiere Pro. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to check out our entire Premiere Pro playlist we have on this channel, which has hundreds of Premiere Pro tutorials. Make sure to give us a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.